Rugby on Off the Ball. With Bank of Ireland, a proud sponsor of Connacht, Leinster, Munster and Ulster Rugby. Never stop competing. Right, so there was a pretty incredible result for Irish rugby overnight in Canada. The WXV competition saw Ireland go up against New Zealand. This time last year, Ireland were in the third tier of this competition, while New Zealand, of course, are reigning world champions. But Ireland managed to upset the odds to win on a 29 points to 27 scoreline after a fairly incredible match. And I'm delighted to say that Ireland captain Adele McMahon is with us on the line to chat about this. Uh, Adele, how are you keeping? Um, yeah, I'm good. i um... I think I'm still a bit tired from from just the celebrations and um, the adrenaline and the caffeine um, of last <laughs> night. So, um, yeah, we're enjoying our day off today, but, yeah, still taking in the win. We got a little bit of the celebrations on social media last night. Zombie in the dressing room was uh, what I saw. What else was there? Um, <laughs> there was a, a few... First, we had a few first cappers um, in terms of staff that missed out in the Australia game. We had a birthday celebration, birthday bumps for Emma, our nutritionist in the team room. Um, Tricky had to make a, a performance on the team bus as well because I owed them. I said on a special occasion I'd sing it for them again, so that had to come out. Right. Uh, yeah, there was uh, there was a lot of songs going on. Yeah. That is. It uh, must be so special. It, it must be one of those things that obviously you've had so much progress over the course of this calendar year that big results were probably expected but when it happens almost arriving in this moment where you need to try and soak it all in you need to try and appreciate this as one of the great moments in your careers it must be a, a bit of an emotional roller coaster the the aftermath of the game yeah absolutely i think uh, the most important um thing for us as a team was to was to enjoy that win um you know wins like that don't come around in a lot, uh, uh, very often and for a lot of people in the screen jersey, we've we've been building on um, historic wins. You know, winning WXV three and and finishing third in the Six Nations and and, and getting that qualifier for the World Cup to to beat the world champions. And um, I think it was really important for us to just take a step back and and just embrace every single moment of that day um, and enjoy enjoy it with each other. Did you expect this to happen yesterday? Um, you know what we I, I don't think the world expected it but we spoke a lot as a team that week about the belief that we had in each other in the squad and the belief that we had in, in how we've been training um, and not just in the last couple of weeks but how we've been building from the get-go um, the trust that we have in our staff the trust that we have in each other as, as players and every week we compete every week that we're not in camp we're competing in club because we want to be better players for our jersey and we spoke a lot about that week of the belief that we had that we could go out and, and and give one to the Black Ferns. And, you know, we did. We spoke just before we went out and pitch. We spoke at half time and the belief never faded. If anything, it, it grew within the game. We grew in confidence. And, you know, we were just so sure of ourselves that we knew exactly what we needed to do when and where in the pitch. And we never we never deviated away from that. So we had a lot of belief in ourselves. I, I'm not sure if it was there on the outside, but we did uh, internally. How do you stick to a game plan when the game is as chaotic as it was yesterday? Um, I de definitely at times, it, yeah, it felt, it very, felt very chaotic. But, you know, during the week we spoke about a lot of different pressure scenarios and, and things that might appear and, and things that we might need to account for. Um, I think the staff are excellent with throwing in, you know, sin bin um, options or, you know, getting a line out quickly out and just getting off the pitch. And we actually have prepped that during the week. So... When moments like that come, it doesn't feel chaotic or, or you can quite feel it easy. Like, oh, we've done this. We know exactly what we need to do and we just need to go and execute it. So, um, yeah, it, it maybe felt and looked chaotic at times, but we were pretty pretty composed uh, internally. Yeah, because that, that is one of the things that Stuart Lancaster used to talk about all the time at Leinster was being comfortable in chaos. And it seems to be something that you guys have tapped into as well. And you did mention the scenario planning of playing with 14 players, Nevo Dowd gets sent to the bin for a section of that second half. What was that period like for the 14 players that were left on the pitch? Um, the messages, you know, just went on to be very clear and, and direct in, in how we to manage the game. Obviously, um, playing on the fringes of, of, of sim bins is, is not easy. So, you know, trying to keep the discipline and, and, and again, sticking to the system. But like we've trained during the week, we had a, a really good hit out against the French Um 
which fed into that chaotic nature of, you know, not, not knowing really what they're going to come with. Um, we've had scenarios where we're doing scrums with 8v7 in sessions, again, to prep for the unknown. Um, so, yeah, it was just sticking to the game plan, wasn't it? What were your emotions like at the full-time whistle? I presume it would have been easier to control had you actually been on the pitch in the middle of it all, but as somebody who is sitting on the sidelines for that section of it, the heart must have been going 90. It, it was, it was... It was, it's really it's still really hard to to put into words uh, how to describe the feeling, but you know the the belief of we are actually going to do this. Um, I was fortunate enough to be at the World Cup in 2014 when Ireland bet the, uh, the Black Ferns for the first time, and um, to to be a spectator then and to be on the sideline knowing that the girls had done the job and and knowing that we were actually we were going to win that game. I was. I, you know, it was a feeling of just uh, pride and and historic moment, and uh, I I didn't have any doubt that we weren't going to we weren't going to go back up the pitch, we weren't going to go into the corner, we weren't going to score off the mall, and and in full faith in Dana slotting the points over at the end. That's an amazing full circle moment to have actually been there ten years ago, watching that brilliant World Cup win. It probably has felt like it's been a long time coming for this. Probably at the start of your career, you thought that things were going well and obviously there's been ups and downs with this team over the last number of years and finally that moment has come full circle from you as a spectator against the Black Ferns to actually participating against the Black Ferns and beating them. Yeah, um, this squad, I suppose it looks like an overnight success uh, to people on the outside but we've put in so much work in the last two years. Um, A lot of work has gone on behind the scenes um, whether it be from the background staff into how we run our week, how our sessions look, how the, how the camp looks, to when the coaches come in and that dual relationship between players and staff and, and putting in a session and a plan that, that actually gets the best out of both of us. So, it, you know, we've been feeling confident and, and growing in confidence every every week that we're here, every game that we play. And some results don't, don't go our way, but the fact that we're now become a team that can defend and fire shots. We we always said that was our ambition to be a team that was hard to to play against and a team that was hard to 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 beat. We started off with France. We yeah, we didn't um we didn't beat France, but we actually we showed the world that we could start playing and, and scoring tries against really good opposition to finish in the Six Nations on a high and coming in and, and doing a job on Australia and, and then and then backing that up again just just yesterday so yeah it might seem like an overnight but for us it's been it's been a lot of hard work for the last last year and a half two years right that's interesting so, so the France game from your experience is actually the moment it began to turn yeah like that was I suppose for me it was like yeah we are competing here with world's best right we were able to put up a show against them we were able to hold them out um, start executing a game plan and 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 start firing shots. But now, like now, we're scoring more tries. Now we're 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 harder to to play against. Um, and that was a that was a big moment, I suppose, for me. Because that's interesting. Because obviously France was the first game, and then it was Italy, and then it was Wales. I'm right in saying that you would have played the first game. Did you, was it the second game or the third game that you were left out of the squad for? And then you get back in for for one of the wins. So y- you also had, I suppose, an interesting experience in that Six Nations where you had to take that on the chin and then come back in training and prove yourself as a, as a starter again or, or how did that work? Yeah, um, like every opportunity that comes comes to you, it, it does a reason for it and um, it's made me a stronger player and, and um, I, I, I trust in the coaches and I just had to, to put my hand up again and, and fight even harder for that for that shirt uh, to get it back but like that, that campaign for us was um, was a lot of highs and lows in that, and I, I know we we set out a goal at the start of the campaign to finish third, and we did. Uh, people probably didn't believe that we would, and we actually did, and we went and did that, and we qualified for a World Cup, and that's when we started really believing in what we had to say, um, what we believed in ourselves, and what markers we'd set out to to achieve. So yeah, that trust in the coaching is something that you've mentioned a couple of times there. Obviously, that situation where you're excluded from a team and then having to get back into the team is testament to yourself and your own ability mentally and as a player. But it also does show the trust that you have and that your teammates would have in this coaching ticket. Where, where does that come from, Adele? And, and how has Beeman and his backroom team managed to cultivate that trust? Um, I think that it's the compete element in training. Like, 
um, we also want to bring build depth in our squad. So sometimes you have to, you know, there's opportunities, there's fighting for positions, um, but like the compete element is massive and we're competing every single training session. It's not, it's not just show up and, and go through the motions, it's compete, compete, compete. So every time you get an opportunity to show what skills you got, that's going to be noticed. Um, and that sometimes, you know, that's one of the best things that reaps, you know, good training reaps um, reward and that builds on confidence, that builds on depth, so that builds trust in, in coaching staff. It's not bad when you're in a situation where the competition in your own position seems to be unbelievable, an unbelievable level of back row talent. Like we were talking about Aoife Wafer at the top of the show, she's been described as world class and obviously Erin King comes on for you and scores a couple of tries herself. Uh, how good are this pair? Oh, they're brilliant. Like, they're brilliant. But I, I, I can't but acknowledge there's so much other players as well that sure. go and do a job. Like, Brittany was absolutely outstanding in that game as well. Uh, Wafer, I, I can't believe she has as, as few caps as she does <laughs> because her experience is, is beyond. And Erin and is, is such an upcoming talent and she was unbelievable in the Olympics for, for the, the Sevens girls. She was outstanding. So I knew we were going to get a pack of energy when she came in. Um, but like uh, the girls across the park, like I thought Stacey defended outstanding. Nod, uh, Nevo Dowd, like the line speed, like no other. I've I, You don't see many props in the country, men's or women's, having line speed like that. So it's a, uh, we're very, I suppose, lucky with the talent that we have coming up and the young girls that are, have have raw talents. They're just eager to learn, eager to, to push on and eager to drive on what standards they believe should be in the Irish jersey. So, um, yeah, I'm very privileged to be surrounded by players like that. It, it does seem that your scrum and your constellation of players in the back row has developed another level over the course of the last few months. Like it's something we were chatting about with Aoife when she was on the show a couple of weeks ago, but just noticeable to the untrained eye even that she moves into the number eight position at scrum time. And obviously that led to one of the tries last night. So that must be seriously satisfying given it's obviously something you're working quite hard on on the training ground. Yeah, Wafer is uh, extremely talented, but uh, like I said, I also have full faith in whoever would be in that eight position that could do a job. Um, but yeah, she's she's a special talent. Um, she's very very kind, and and she's she's always going about her business and always helpful uh, for other players as well. Um, but yeah, I can't commend the squad any more uh, more than. I think from one to twenty three, like the the players put their body on the line, and they were outstanding. Was there much talk in the build-up about the words from the Black Ferns coaches just with regards to describing Aoife as their six or eight in the, the red headgear and then describing Dano O'Brien as the first five and uh, the massive left boot? There was some suggestion that maybe they didn't quite know the Irish players' names. Uh, to be honest, we didn't read into too much about it. I I only actually noticed that until uh, after the game. I think someone mentioned it to me. I think, um, you know, we... we we learn what we need to know about the, um, our opposition and then we focus on ourselves. And I don't think many players pay too heed to what goes on in the, um, on the web uh, before a game. So no, I don't think anyone was aware of that. I did want to ask as well then just about some of the, the changes to the backroom team that Beeman has brought in this year. And I think he was talking about this in the aftermath of the game as well, the likes of uh, the, the new forwards coach and Alex Codling and, and Hugh Hogan, the new defence coach. Can you talk about the pair of them and, and what they brought? Yeah, I the forwards are in awe of, of Cotters and what he's brought to the line-out game. He's an outstanding man. Um, he's he's worked very, very well with the squad. He's an incredible uh, ability to know what each player needs to drive them on, what kind of coaching cues to give them. His level of detail is is amazing and he like he is who he is and we embrace who he is and he embraces who we are. Um, so he's... Yeah, he's definitely brought a new level to our line out game. Um and likewise with Hugh, he's he's come in, he's he's shared his his knowledge of the a defensive game, some breakdown nuggets um when we need it. But like they've they've just slotted in so seamlessly into our into our group and um not to say that like when we had Deck in before, like he was he was outstanding with us again. So everyone that comes into this to to our, our team is I just embraced us and embraced who we are and, and not try to change, I suppose, uh, or mold us into something that uh, they think we should be. They've, they've um, 
adapted it to the ability that we have in the squad. What happens over the next couple of days? Presumably, the video review session is going to be one of those brilliant video review sessions that you're all very much looking forward to. Yeah, I to be honest, like um, like I said, we we really embraced yesterday and enjoyed it. And today is a bit of a a recovery day for us. But um, I think come even time now, we'll start switching on and changing the gears because the squad is really eager to get going. We're hungry now for more. So there's been a really good switch in mindset of, OK, like we enjoyed yesterday, but we still have a job to do because we've got two more big games to come up. And um, already this morning, like the, the medical screens are going on, the recovery, even nutrition, like the it, it's a complete mindset. And that's that's where we need to be as a squad as well. Um, so, yeah, we'll get our reviews, previews in and, and then it's it's another blanket week and we go again. Did you get much of a sense of people watching back home and anybody who's up in the middle of the night watching you? Yeah, I, my phone was absolutely, uh, I couldn't even describe the amount of texts and messages that we got and there were videos that people sent and there was people messaging at home that I I didn't even think they knew I was still playing rugby or that I played rugby for Ireland, you know, it was just um, contacts from the past and um, other like rugby uh, teammates reaching out that I used to play with at home in Ireland or in, or in England, so um, to see the effect that it has taken over the nation and, and over the world of rugby is, is amazing. And that's exactly what we want to do. And that is part of our ambition with uh, with our with our journey as a squad, that we want to inspire people and we want to we want to inspire the Irish nation and, and make Ireland proud. Does that sort of stuff inspire you then in uh, the opposite direction as well, knowing that you are having that impact on people? Yeah, massively. Like we talk a lot about about our whys and why we're here and it's representing each other, it's representing our families and where we come from. But when when you see that you're inspiring people at home and the messages of pride and people backing you, it, it gives you more motivation and, like I said, more hunger to actually go after more. So I think, if anything, it's probably brought us back to earth now again and, and wanting to, I want to do a good job now this week and, and heading into the Canada game ready to go. Well, listen, Adele, very best of luck in that Canada game. A pleasure to chat to you and congratulations on a magnificent result last night. Thank you very much. Cheers, thank you. That's Adele McMahon, Ireland rugby captain on the line. Just to let you know that St. Pat's have gone 1-0 up against Shelburne. Another twist in the crazy tale of the League of Ireland Premier Division title contention. So Shell's 1-0 down there. We'll keep you up to speed on that as the game develops. We'll take a quick break. Rugby on Off The Ball with Bank of Ireland a proud sponsor of Connacht, Leinster, Munster and Ulster Rugby. Never stop competing.